Yo, what's good? It's your boy Dom. Welcome to Dose of Dom Reacts. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back. If you're a returning subscribers, speaking of returning subscribers, still 96% of y'all are not subscribed. We hit our subscriber goal, subscriber goal of 100 subs. We have 137 subs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Like that is just amazing. Our next goal is a thousand so we can get in the YouTube partner program and start monetizing. And I can only do that with your guys' help. I can't do it by myself. You guys are the main player in this business. Without you guys, I'm nothing. Nothing. I realize that now and I'll always realize that. Today, we have, looks like a very fun video. This was requested by William Keith. William, I just want to tell you, thank you. I see all your comments. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you so much. He said, you should watch a video about Stellar Engines. I was like, great, let's do it. Today we have How to Move the Sun, Stellar Engines by Kershaw Not in a Nutshell. Let's fucking get into this video. Nothing in the universe is static. In the Milky Way, Billions of stars orbit the galactic center. Some, like our sun, are pretty consistent, keeping a distance of around 30,000 light years from the galactic center, completing an orbit every 230 million years. This dance is not an orderly ballet, more like a skating rink filled with drunk toddlers. This <laughs> chaos makes the galaxy dangerous. Our solar neighborhood is constantly changing, with stars moving hundreds of kilometers every second. Wow. Only the vast distances between objects protect us from the dangers out there. But we might get unlucky in the future. At some point, we could encounter a star going supernova, or a massive object passing by and showering Earth with asteroids. Oh. If something like this were to happen, we would likely know thousands, if not millions of years in advance. Oh. We st oh, dang. Still couldn't do much about it. Really? Unless we move our whole solar system out of the way. <laughs> Yeet! Oh, no. Oh, yeah, with this. So, I forgot to say, my Cash App link is down below. If you guys would like to donate... It's going to go straight to the YouTube premium, so we do not have to watch ads. Thank you. <laughs> to move the solar system, we need a stellar engine, a megastructure used to steer a star through the galaxy. Wow, that's it's the cool. kind of thing that might be built by an advanced civilization with Dyson Sphere level technology that's thinking about Elon Musk grandson's grandson. Of grandson. <laughs> but how do we possibly move the hundreds of thousands of objects in the solar system? The good news is Jeez. we can ignore all of that. We only need to move the sun, all the other stuff is glued to it by gravity and will follow it wherever it decides to go. Facts. There are lots of ideas about what a stellar engine might look like and how it would work. We've picked two grounded in our current understanding of physics that could be built in theory. The simplest kind of stellar engine is the Shkadov thruster, a giant Shkadov thruster. It works on the same principle as a rocket. Mm. Like rocket fuel, the photons released as solar radiation carry momentum. Wow. Not a lot, but a bit. For example, if an astronaut turned on a flashlight in space, it would push them backwards very, very slowly. A Yo, that's cool. That's cool. Stellar engine will work a little better than a flashlight because the sun produces a lot of photons. <laughs> oh, damn. The basic idea of the Shkadov thruster is to reflect up to half of the solar radiation to create thrust and slowly push the sun where we want it to go. In order for the Shkadov thruster to work, it must be kept in the same place, not orbiting the sun. Okay. Although the sun's gravity will try to pull it in, it will be supported by radiation pressure, which props the mirror up. That's cool. This means That's the cool. mirror would have to be very light, made of micron-thin reflecting foil from materials like aluminium alloys. Oh, wow. The mirror's shape is important, too. Enveloping the sun in a giant spherical shell wouldn't work 
because that would refocus light back to the sun, heating it up, mm. and creating all sorts of unpleasant problems. Uh oh. Instead, we use a parabola, which sends most of the photons around the sun parabola. and in the same direction, which maximizes trouble. Word of the day, parabola. Bust. To prevent accidentally burning or freezing Earth with too much or too little sunlight, the only safe mm. place to build a Shkarov thruster is okay. over the sun's poles. This okay. means we can only move the sun vertically in the plane of the solar system and one direction in the Milky Way, which limits our travel options a bit. But I mean, that should be enough. For a civilization capable of building a Dyson Sphere, this is a relatively simple endeavor. Not complicated, just very hard to build. At full throttle, the solar system could probably be moved by about 100 light years over 230 million years. Wow. Over a few billion years, it gives us near complete control over the sun's orbit in the galaxy. Wow. But in the short term, this might not be fast enough to dodge a deadly supernova. That's why Dang. we thought we could do better. So we asked our astrophysicist friend if he could design a faster stellar engine for this video. Mm. He did, and oh. wrote a paper about it that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. See, this is why I like this channel. They do their research. Even though they block my videos, they release them eventually. So I have no qualms. They do their research. I appreciate that. You can find it in our sources document. We're going to call our new stellar engine the Kaplan Thruster. It works a lot like a traditional rocket. Shoot exhaust one way to push yourself the other. It's a large space station platform powered by a Dyson sphere that gathers matter from the sun to power nuclear fusion. Mm. It shoots out a very fast jet of particles at nearly 1% the speed of light out of the solar system. Wow. A second jet pushes the sun along like a tugboat. The Kaplan That's thruster cool. requires a lot of fuel, millions of tons per second. To gather this fuel, our thruster uses very large electromagnetic fields to funnel hydrogen and helium from the solar wind into the engine. Damn. The solar wind alone doesn't provide enough fuel, though. And that's where the Dyson Sphere comes in. <laughs> Using its power, sunlight can be refocused to the surface of the sun. This heats small regions to extreme temperatures, lifting billions of tons of mass off the sun. Wow. This mass can be collected and separated into hydrogen and helium. The helium is burned explosively in thermonuclear fusion reactors. A jet of radioactive oxygen at a temperature of nearly a billion degrees is expelled and becomes our primary source of propulsion from our stellar engine. To prevent the engine from just crashing into the sun, it needs to balance itself. To do this, we accelerate the collected hydrogen this is amazing. magnetic fields using particle accelerators and shoot a jet back at the sun. This balances the thruster and transfers the thrust of our engine back to the sun. In as little as a million years, this engine can move the sun by 50 light years. Wow. More than enough to dodge a supernova. Wow. At full throttle, like, the yeah, solar system can yeah, be completely yeah, yeah. in its galactic orbit in 10 million years. Wow. But wait, will we use up the sun this way? Fortunately, nah. the sun is so massive that even billions of tons of material will barely scratch the surface. In fact, this megastructure will actually extend our sun's life since lower mass stars burn slower, keeping the solar system wow. habitable for many more billions of years. With a Kaplan thruster, we could turn the entire solar system into our spaceship. For example, by orbiting backwards in the galaxy and colonizing hundreds or thousands of stars as we pass wow. by. Wow. It may even be possible to escape the galaxy entirely and expand beyond the Milky Way. Yo, Stellar imagine, engines bro. are the kind of machines built by civilized. Imagine, though, like, what? Yo, that would be amazing. Like, I know I'm not going to be alive for that, but, like, Damn, son. Organizations <laughs> thinking not in terms of years or decades, but eons. Since Eon. we know that our sun will die one day, a stellar engine could allow our future descendants of humans to travel to other stars 
without ever having to venture into the terrifying dark abyss of interstellar space. Imagine vacations 10,000 years from now. Where are you going? I'm going to Disney World Moon. Because cause you, cause you know Disney's going to own like the moon one day and put up a theme park on it. <laughs> That's going to be a vacation. That's, Until we build a this is engine, crazy. We're adrift and subject to the whims of the galactic sea. Mm -hmm. We may not like where it leads us. Maybe our descendants will set sail and become an interstellar species for millions of years to come. We need to. This was our last video for the year 12,019 of the human era. Wow. With that being said, wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, video requests down in the comments below 12 minutes or under, please. I will react to it. It doesn't have to be this channel. It can be anything. I will react to it. Please put a link. Don't put the title. Put the link to the video, please. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Thank you. See you guys in the next video. Deuces.